praise the Lord. Praise well, the Lord. Good to hear you. Double my page and share it. <laughs> yeah. If anyone's wants quiet in my area. Yeah. Yep, yep. Praise the Lord. I was just waiting for my um connecting my my side. Connecting your side. Yeah, just on my on my um on my Facebook so people can watch it from my page. Can I view it from my own page? Bro, you don't have a page. You only got <laughs> when you go oh. live, um when you go live, it automatically goes on your page. Oh, so I can't see, I can't view it when it's going live. Um, I think you can. I think yeah, you, on device. Um, unless you have another yeah, device, yeah. you have another device that you can uh, watch the comments from. Is that Nelly? Okay. God bless you, everyone. I don't know. I think you have to sign into a different one. Is that what I think that's what you're saying? You got to sign into it from a different um, device, eh? Yeah, because I'm all of the um, comments for you. Or, or through my B Life. So. Not true. All good. Praise the Lord. We had a good topic tonight. <clears throat> yeah. Be really good. Does this show the. Oh, there. I, I just clicked on it. Oh, I had to turn that volume down. Nah. Oh, 21 people. What the heck? My Lord, my Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> huh? I know. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Gates' first time. Um, Doing the live. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why we need the body to help us on the in the background. Yeah, oh. we had some technical difficulties, so we did start about two minutes late, but all good. Praises to the most high. <laughs> <laughs> the most high, okay. Eh? Yeah. Uh. Is my notes? You know, if it's on my page, it automatically pops up. Hey, eh? I don't know how Facebook works, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. Everything. Yeah. Well, people can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Haven't really started yet. Oh, bless you. Oh, this. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. Hello, uh, yeah. Yeah. Here you go. Okay. I'll just uh, watch out for otherwise. Oh, what's the next one? But I have to come closer. Keep okay. coming a little bit. Oh. I think it's just out of frame. God bless you, everyone who's watching. Huh? No, you can see it. It's in the frame now. It was just out of frame before. You, you had it perfect before. Praise the Lord. Good to see everyone. Come on here. Yeah. Watch your friends. We've got a good topic today. Mm-hmm. Even for those who don't believe that Jesus is God, we want to throw through, we want to um, really show through Scripture uh, the deity of Christ. Mm-hmm. So I know it's a really important topic as well. Amen. We've been having some interesting talks lately, eh, Tui? Amen. So we just finished having the Sabbath last week. 
and uh, we had some challenges. It was good. Um, Nadia just sent us all the messages. But I think the problem is they need to watch the start of the video of the live. I think I believe we answered all the questions, but they need to watch the start of the video. Um, if they watch the start, it will answer everyone's question. Yeah, I had a look at, uh, at a few of the questions, and it just felt yeah. like people jumped in, jumped on there, and asked questions, but didn't really watch the actual video. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I guess um, it'll be good. Um, I guess our topic today will be uh, another good topic for people that is watching, because a lot of people don't know if Jesus is God. They say he's a son of God. We agree with that. They say um, if he's if Jesus is God, then who's he praying to? You know, there'll be questions like that, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but that's why um, it'll be good. So someone asked a question. The topic, Jesus is God, is this referring to the Trinity? So someone asked that question. Um, I think the Trinity, today we're not focusing on the Trinity. Um, we're going to focus on Jesus being God, and the Trinity will be laid on. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, so but be, for yeah. those who do... Yeah ask the question then yeah we do agree with the trinity we we so so we awesome um can't wait to uh, get this topic started and uh please um if you have any questions please um share your questions at the end but we will definitely talk about Trinity. Um, well, if people don't like the word Trinity, we can say Godhead. But um, we, we're trying to try our best to um, explain what the scriptures say. Yeah, we, we really wanted to focus on on this topic, obviously, because there's a lot of people out there who don't claim Christ as uh, God. Mm -hmm. And some people claim themselves to be Christ. It's just all sorts of weird. But we want to focus on a scriptural basis of who jesus is from the old testament and the new testament because i know um we've had a lot of you know a lot of people share from the new testament side of things but we want to show through scripture how clear it is um jesus showing himself in the old testament as well um but yeah, yeah. Tui, you want to share it yeah well i think a big uh, good topic um so I have to look for my notes now. So I think with the, I want to get to um, Second Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians chapter eleven. I believe this topic is really important uh, for a reason. So, so Second Corinthians, he was watching chapter eleven, um, verse four. So he was watching Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse four, and he says, "For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached." Or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might will bear with him. So, um, Apostle Paul warns us: you know, there'll be another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. And and I mean, people will say that Jesus is something else. You know what I mean? They'll say that um, Jesus. Uh, they might say Jesus is Marco the Marco the Archangel. Uh, they might say that Jesus is Satan's brother. They might say that Jesus is a small God. They might say Jesus is just a man. You know what I mean, but this is why we're doing the topic today, so we can give people understanding on um, what does the Bible say who Jesus is. And the next um, book I want to go to is also Galatians. So Galatians chapter um, chapter one. So Galatians chapter one, um, verse eight and nine. So Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. And it says, But though we or an angel from heaven preach another um, any other gospel unto you than that which you have oh, sorry, which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Mm. As we said before, so say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you <coughs> that you have received, let him be accursed. So um, Paul wants Galatians as well about another gospel, even an angel come up to you and preaches another Jesus. And this is why it's really important to share this topic is Jesus God because we have to be careful because there's many false spirits and false doctrines out there. Mm. 
Mm. And, and I believe it's really important just to, to really push this out to me. I think what's good as well is um, I think over the years we've, and I, myself until we've come across, uh, for example, a lot of people like the Jehovah's Witnesses who will defend that uh, Jesus is a smaller God, but not the Almighty God, yeah. and um, that's you know that's that's heresy in itself, yeah. because there is no other God besides God. So you can't show that there are smaller gods rather than you know the Almighty God. This is in comparison to what the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses say. Um, obviously, Muslims don't believe that. Um, the Hebrew Israelite group as well. They don't claim Jesus having as being equal with God. But yeah, it would be good to um, go through the scripture and share that. Yeah, so it's, so it's going to be awesome. Um, you know, like uh, we all understand that there's only one God. Mm. And, um, that's what the Bible says that we're only one God. I mean, and, and this is why we're gonna uh, hit on this topic. And I know people will ask questions about the Trinity. We'll try our best to answer it, but we will have a study on Trinity later on. Mm. So, um, but for now, uh, we're just waiting for people to jump on and we can get started. Too. So, God bless you guys. Yeah, um, we're just getting prepared to start. I think me and Gabe just been had, uh, finished last night. We had a good conversation um, with some brothers. And yeah, it's yeah. good. Like if, if there yeah. is, you know, if you guys do have questions on something and you and you do want to organize even a private call, you know, we can yeah. organize something through Zoom and we can answer your questions through there. If you disagree with any of the things that we share, then you know, bring a biblical basis as to why you disagree, and then we'll be more than happy to sit down with you guys and, and talk about it. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. Eight o'clock yeah. over there, in New Zealand, eh? Yes, um, yep, going to quarter past eight. Cold over there? No, it's um, normal. Oh, it's raining now, so um, it hasn't rained for a week. Sure. Yeah, so um, it's been good. There's a lot. So everyone, um, please hold your questions to the end. Um, we'll get, we'll, we'll answer your questions. Yeah. So, um, Gabe, do you want to, we'll start now? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I can pray. Yep. All right, so, okay, so Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray, Father, just to um, just strengthen us, Lord, and give us wisdom to speak um, your word. And I pray, Father, that um, people that's listening today, their hearts will be open to receive. Um, I just pray uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you just um, have your way with this conversation and let the Spirit lead. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let your perfect will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, in regards to this topic, uh, two has got an awesome breakdown of. Yeah. Is it? Uh, I guess I'll, I'll let you share on that because Marwan probably just reaffirms more of what you're going to be sharing anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, my what I'm, what I'm trying to share is the purpose of why he's coming. So we understand that you know Jesus came right mm. but what what was the reason and why why would god come so anyone can just grab scripture and say jesus is god but there has to be a reason why he came and i want to go back all the way to genesis you know what i mean and and started off with um genesis chapter 22 so whoever's watching i'm not gonna read the whole um uh, scriptures like i say the scriptures up you can read it but i'm, I'm just gonna um, pick up some key verses all right so in genesis um, God gives a promise to Abraham. So in Genesis chapter chapter 22, verse 16 to 18, all right? The key verse will be key verse will be verse 18, all right? And Abraham says, And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So in your seed, mm. that all the nations of the earth will be blessed. So that's the key verse I want to be on. And we all understand, like, uh, he's not talking about many seeds. He's talking about one seed. Yep. So in Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. So Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. And he says, now to Abraham and his seeds were the promise made. He said, not and to seeds as of many, but as one. And to 
into your seed, which is Christ. Amen. So we all know from Genesis throughout the whole Old Testament, Jesus comes and fulfills that. So, um, and also, I also want to bring up something else. Even in Abraham's seed, even kings comes through his line. Amen. Mm. So David, um, he, he promises that too to Abraham. So that's in Genesis chapter 17, verse 4 to 7. So Genesis chapter 17, verse 4 to 7. So this is when he changes his name from Abraham to Abraham. Mm. And in the covenant, all right? And the key verse here um, will be verse 6. So key verse in, um, in Genesis 17, verse 4 to 7, verse 6. And I will make ye exceeding fruitful, exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of ye and king. And kings shall come out of you. Mm. Amen? So kings will come throughout of Abraham's line. Mm. So we know mm. Jesus comes, a seed, and now we know a king comes through his line. All right? Mm. So we all know that King Saul got chosen, but he failed. All right? And then he, and then King David got chosen. So yeah. that's where the line comes through. Right? So in First Chronicles chapter 17, so First Chronicles chapter 17, Verse 11 to 15. All right. So first Chronicles 17, verse 11 to 15. Mm -hmm. I want to just um write this down. I'm sort of just say key verses. So um so verse 12, he said, He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. Amen. So it talks about a throne, and also verse 14, it says, But I will settle him in my house. And in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall, shall be established forevermore. Amen. Mm. So it's talking about a throne, all right? And it's talking about the David's kingdom. And through that, let's uncross reference this to Acts chapter 2. So Acts chapter 2, verse 29 to 31. All right. I just want to hear a key verse. Um, it's verse, verse 30, okay? So Acts chapter 2, verse 29 to 31. So um, key verse is verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Mm. Amen. So mm. that's why they call him the son of David. You know what I mean? He said he is the one that's come to fulfill to sit on David's throne. It wasn't talking about Solomon. It was talking mm. about the line who's ever coming to fulfill that promise mm. that the kingdom will be forever. Amen. Mm. But then what's cool, as you keep reading down, and then this is when you start seeing God coming. Amen. Because we know there's a seed yeah. coming. And this is when you start seeing the divine nature of God coming. So in uh, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, uh, 14 to 17. So write that down, people. Um, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 to 17. Okay. So I'll read verse 14. Okay. Key verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. It's also may he'll give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. Mm. We know in the New Testament. When Jesus was born, it says Emmanuel, it means God, God, uh, with, us. Yes, God with us. Amen. Yes. So it's a vast yes. amazing You've seen the connection coming, right? If you read a couple of chapters down, a couple of chapters down in Isaiah 9, chapter 6 and 7, all right? So Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. So I'm going to connect, connect this son to David, to the promise of the throne. Mm. Amen. So Isaiah chapter 6. Chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, and it says, for, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be up on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of, of the increase of his government, and of peace shall be no end. And what's this? And on the throne of David, and on his kingdom, to establish it. See that? It's coming mm -hmm. to fulfill what he said that um, God said to David that a son will be sitting on his throne. What was his name? 
plus the games. Mighty God, mm. everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor. Mm. It's amazing. I can see that. I thought, wow, this guy sounds really divine. Who mm. this person's got? All right. He's he's even named Mighty God. Yeah. All right. That's right. So look at this. Let's get to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter twenty-three, verse five to six. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 to 6. All right, and it says, Behold, the days come, save the Lord, that will raise up unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, mm -hmm. and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In these days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall be um, brought safely. And, and this is the name whereby he shall be called. What's his name? The Lord our righteous. Yeah, amen. I mean, like, yeah, the Lord our righteous. Man, see all the signs of of this person coming, and it wasn't just a person. Like, oh yeah, I'm just a human being. Man, this person was divine. He's called God. But I'm gonna break it down even more. So, um, if anyone knows, before Jesus comes, someone had to lead the way. Someone yeah. had to open the way for him him to come. That's right. And that. In, that's in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. So in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. So this is um, what Malachi says. Behold, I, have, I will send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers in, um, to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. This time come and smite the earth with a curse. Mm. Wow. I mean, so he comes. And it says, before the day of the Lord, Elijah has to come. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. This is what um, the prophecy that Elijah will say. All right. So let's get to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. All right. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. It says, the voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert. I'm oh, sorry. In the desert, a highway for our God. All right. Mm. Wow. See that word, right? See that scripture? When John the Baptist comes, that's what he quotes. In okay. John 1, verse 23, they'll ask him, um, John the Baptist, who are you? Are you Elijah? He says, No. Are you the Christ? And he says, No. Are you this? Are you the prophet? He says, No. And they ask him, Who are you? And it says in John 1, 23, he goes, He said, I am the voice. Of one who's crying out in the wilderness. That's right. The way of the Lord, as saith the prophet Isaiah. Amen. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. He's connecting all this, all right? Mm. So John the ba Baptist came and made a way for who? He didn't make a way to. So let's go to John chapter 1, verse 29 to 30. That's right. So John chapter 1, verse 29 to 30. So it says, the next day, John saved Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Wow, that's amazing. Like that's James, right. yeah. before me. But guess what? John was older than Jesus. Yeah. How can he be before him? Mm. Unless he was, he was really divine. He was, you know what I mean? Amen. All over the scriptures, I mean, Jesus, um, John was older, and in I want to share one more scripture to, to confirm that uh, that John came to fulfill Elijah's job, right? What mm -hmm. Isaiah says. So let's go to um, Matthew chapter 17, verse 10 to 13. Okay, Matthew chapter 17, verse 10 to 13. So this is disciples and Jesus. And he says, and his disciple asked him saying, why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly first uh, shall come, uh, first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke unto them of John 
the Baptist. John the Baptist. Amen. That's right. So John the Baptist, his job was to make the way for who? Our Lord, our God. Mm. And what the Lord of righteous, mighty God. Mm. He's, he's called the everlasting father. <clears throat> man, it's, it's just all over the scriptures, man. Like when he came, he came to fulfill Abraham's promise and mm. he fulfilled David's promise. And now he's sitting on the throne. Mm. I mean, that's what I talked about Colossians 1, that his throne will be forever wow. and ever. Amen. So uh, that's what I want to share. Just, I'm trying to break it down as fast as I can to make it understandable. So, um, yeah, that's my understanding of Jesus to show that he is God. It's also, it says in um, in Luke 2, so in Luke chapter 2, verse 11, um, uh, Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, verse 11, and it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Mm. Amen? Amen. It's pretty crazy, man. He's also called the Savior. Throughout the, old, throughout the whole Old Testament, it says, There's no Savior but me. God is the Savior. Mm. It's pretty amazing. So, awesome. Gabe, you want to share from that? or anything? I guess I'll go straight off yeah. that point that you just shared. Um, cool. <clears throat> throughout the whole whole Old Testament, you see that God is known as Savior, and He's the only yeah. one known as the Savior. So we'll jump to some scripture. Isaiah chapter 43. Uh, can you guys hear me clearly? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 43, starting from vo- uh, verse 3. And it says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. And mm. you jump down to verse 10 and 11 of the same chapter. And it says this, You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall, shall they be after me. Verse 11, this is key verse. I, even I, am the Lord. So this is the Lord God speaking. And besides me, and beside me, there is no Savior. Well, so this yeah. is God speaking, saying that there is no other Savior besides Him. One, mm-hmm. one more scripture in the Old Testament, um, Hosea chapter 1. Um, starting from ver- oh, key verse, verse 7. And again, you know, we urge you guys to write these scriptures down. We're, we're, we're trying to get through it as quickly as possible because there is a lot of information. But read yeah. the whole chapter in your own time. We, we don't have the time to read every single chapter right now. Um, yeah. So so in this story, obviously, this is talking about uh, prophetic. of, of, of uh, This is prophecy of what's to come. Uh, verse 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. So remember, this is the line that Jesus comes through. And will save them by the Lord their God. And this is key. And will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. So he's saying the way that he used to save his people in the Old Testament was through battle. Was always through mm-hmm. taking them out of captivity and using someone like, um, uh, say, Gideon, for example, to take them out of captivity from the Midianites. But he's saying now I'm going to save them by the Lord their God. All right. So, so now that we've got a bit of a background of... Um, of, of of who the Savior is. We we already read in Luke chapter 2, verse 11, where it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. We'll jump mm-hmm. over to Acts chapter 13, verse 23. And he reads, Of this man's seed has God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. It's like plain and clear there. It says that he raised the Savior and then he tells you the name straight after. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we took for the Savior, uh, look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and our Lord Jesus Christ, which Christ, which is our hope. Titus chapter 1, verse 4. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God, Father, and, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is only a few scriptures. Mm. There's heaps more that, that point to Jesus. I don't think anyone will try and refute that, um, yeah. that Jesus is the Savior. But I guess we wanted to show more so that in the Old Testament, only God is is known as the Savior. And he said it there when I read it in um, Isaiah chapter 43, there is no other, uh, uh, there's, there is no other Savior besides me. That's like, that's so clear. You know what I mean? Um, I also do want to share about um, what Toya was sharing about with the king, mm. him um, being known as the king as well. So we'll jump to same chapter in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 15. And it says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6, the very next chapter over, it says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Amen. You know what I mean? So, so we're, we're talking about who, who the King is. Um, and, and notice there's something else that he says in that, in that, in that verse. I'm the first and the last, and beside me there is no God. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. And he reads, To keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time, God the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords. This is This is... Jesus that they're referring to, is he greater than God? The King? No, he is God the King. That's the only way that it can work. Is that remember too you were sharing before that there's gonna through the seed of Abraham, there's there were gonna be kings. Mm -hmm. And then when Jesus steps on the scene, he's he's king of kings, mm -hmm. Lord of Lords. So he's king of all the kings of all the kings that uh, reign supreme throughout time. Um Revelation chapter one, verse eight, it says. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So this is talking about Jesus. Well, this is Jesus talking, actually. Revelation chapter 22, verse 13. This is going to correlate with the, with um, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6. And it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Same exact thing that's written in Isaiah 44, verse 6. So we can actually see there, that when we're talking about the kings, which is what uh, Toy was talking about, the same description that he has in the Old Testament where God says um, that he's the first and the last. Jesus puts that on himself. He goes, I'm the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the Alpha and the, and the Omega. Amen. Also, uh, did you want to share on that? Not just, uh, I keep going, um, yep. I think I, we knew pretty equipped with all the scriptures, so he hmm. keeps sharing. Yeah. Yep. Just like we, um, in the same chapter that you used in chapter one, in verse seventeen and eighteen, so it's chapter uh, Revelation chapter one, mm -hmm. verse seventeen and eighteen. It says, "And when I saw him, this is John, um, uh, Apostle John. Uh, when I saw him, like he's talking about a vision, right? Mm -hmm. So when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand on, upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first, and I am and the last. So every everyone understands that title." Is for God, because that's Isaiah. Yeah, so Isaiah forty four six, God calls himself. He calls himself the first and the last. Mm. But look at the next thing he says: "I am He that liveth and was dead." Mm. But when did He? When did God die? Mm. You know, I mean, he said, "I was Him that liveth but dead, but behold, I am alive for forevermore." Amen. And have the key of hell and death. You know, what I mean, yeah. and it's really crazy to show people that He saw God. Coming to him, and he says, I am the first and the last. I am he that lived but that died. Mm. It's pretty crazy man, yeah. to confirm that he is God Almighty. Mm. Amen. Okay? Praise the Lord. So, yeah. furthermore, you look at, let, let's look at the glory of God. So, in Isaiah mm. chapter 42, verses mm. 8, this is what it says I am the Lord. So, that's the, the, the tetragrammaton that's used there. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. All right. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 11 says, 
for my own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? I will not give my glory unto another. So God here is specifically saying that he's not going to give his glory to another, that, that the glory that he has is unique and specific to just him. Right? So, so he's already set a basis of who the glory belongs to. Now we, we jump over to John chapter 17, verse 5. It says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. And I know there's going to be a lot of questions about, um, you know, who was Jesus and how come, you know, his glory wasn't there at the time. Remember, he came down in the flesh. God manis manifested himself in the flesh as well. So if Jesus here is claiming that he had the glory with him before the world was, that can only that can only make sense that the glory that we that we, he had with God is the same, showing him to be God. If that makes sense. Praise the Lord. Also, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 8. I want to break something down for you guys. It says, it says, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it, you, you are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. All right? Mm -hmm. And then you look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 3 and 4. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. So that first one that I was reading in Isaiah 44 verse 8, that word there, God is, is in the Hebrew is rock. So you see that in Deuteronomy and in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 8. Then we jump over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4. Mm -hmm. And reveals to us what that rock is. Because we can already see here that um, God, unto our God, He is the rock. We see that in Deuteronomy 32, verse um, 4. But in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 4, it says, And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that float that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Again, you know the the attributes and the and and the character of who God is is revealed in the New Testament. See, we wouldn't have known. Okay, we would have just thought, okay, rock, God, and that's and those reading the Torah at that time would have just thought, okay, God is known as this and that and this and that. But in the New Testament, it gets revealed who who God is. Um. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13. And it says, Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? And who shall let it? All right, so this is God speaking, those who he has in his hand, that no one can take them out of his hands, right? John chapter 10, verse 28. And this is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And so this is in 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 you know referring to those who, who have that salvation. No man can pluck them out of, out of my hand. There's another scripture as well in um Hosea chapter two where he says the same thing. In um in Psalms chapter twenty three, verse one and two, it says this the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Everyone knows the scripture. Everyone's got songs about it. <laughs> Psalms chapter 95 verse 7. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. So that's Psalm chapter 95 verse 7. Then you go to John chapter 10 verse 7. We'll start from verse 7 first, and it says, then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And then he further confirms this in verse 11. and says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So he's talking about like the shepherd. You know what I mean? Amen. Um, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8 to 10. And I'll read this out real quick. It says, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, so this is the Lord speaking to Isaiah, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, 
sent me and he said, Go and tell this go and tell these people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and you see indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat and their ears heavy, and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart and, and convert and be healed. Right, so this is Old Testament scripture. It's quoted again in the book of Matthew, chapter verse, uh, chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. It says, "For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart." So this is Jesus speaking, and should be converted. And the last part in the book of Isaiah says, "And be healed," but the last part in Matthew chapter thirteen it says, "And I should heal them." Mm. You know what I mean? So, so now we we see in uh, Isaiah quoting what God is going to do that He's going to heal them, and then when it comes to Matthew chapter thirteen, Jesus speaking, He's saying, "And I should heal them," matching Himself to be, uh, you know, being equal with God, obviously making Himself God Himself. We got to understand there are many scriptures in the Bible that that confirm His deity. Um, you know, and I know there's going to be questions about the Trinity and um, is there multiple gods, is there two gods, which is obviously something that we will cover on another episode. But we do want to make, uh, we do want to try and make clear Jesus was seen as God throughout the Old Testament, but it's revealed a lot more in the New in, in the New Testament. It's all prophecy. Everything that's spoken about about the Messiah, about God coming down, about God being manifested in the flesh, that actually happens. In the New Testament, if I can just uh, give you one more scripture before I'll give it over to Tui. It says, um, oh, sorry, there's, um, there's a scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And it says this, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Uh, where am I? God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up into glory. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that that part says God was manifest in the flesh. If you don't know who manifests in the flesh, John 1, 1, John 1, 14. It says that he, the word became flesh. Yeah, Sorry? yeah it's pretty cool. In um, John 1, it says the word was with God. And the word was God, you know what I mean? And, and the word, um, John 14, um, 1 14, he said the word became flesh. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. Um, I believe everyone that's everyone that was writing was in the scriptures. Like, I'll give an example in Hebrews chapter 1. It's in Hebrews chapter 1, verse, let's go to verse 8. Um, verse 8 to, um, sorry, verse 8 to 12. All right. So in Hebrews chapter 1, he's just talking, this is the um, father speaking. And he says, but unto the son, he saith, your throne, O God, is forever and ever a, a, a scepter of righteousness, is a scepter of your kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even your God, has anointed ye the oil of gladness above ye fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and and the heavens are the works of your hands mm. they shall perish but you remaineth and they all will wax old as doth a does a garment and the vesture shall thou fold them up and they shall be changed but you but thou are the same and ye shall not fail amen mm. so so in um hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to um to 12 um it's amazing when he speaks to the son, he actually um, quoted a, a scripture. You know what I mean? So um, in Psalms, sorry, in um, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, that's talking, oh, I lost my note. Give me a second. So, in, sorry, uh, verse, verse 10 says, can you hear me? Yep. So verse 10 Verse 10 to 12, that's quoting from um, um, Psalms 102, verse 25 to 27. This is a cross-reference. 
Psalms 102. Yep. What's the verse again, bro? Uh, verse 25 to 27. And this whole chapter is um, David praying to God. Amen. Mm. So verse 25 to 27, it goes, Of hope have laid the foundation of the earth, the heavens are the works of your hand, so, um, they shall perish, but you but thou endure and all the shall wax old like the garment. As a vesture shall be thou change them, and thou shall be changed. But you are the same, and the you shall have no end. Amen. So they when they're talking about Jesus, they actually used the book of Psalms to connect it to show who Jesus is. So Jesus is not just a, you know, people say, Oh, he's God, but he's not the most high God. Mm. Does that make sense? He is the most high God. That's what we're trying to share today, that he's the most high. They're trying to say that someone that's higher than Jesus. No, in Philippians chapter 2, he, act, he actually says he found it, he, the, um, he didn't find it rob robbery to be equal with God. That's right. So, so in Philippians chapter 2, what verse was it? Um, pull it up real quick. Um, verse 6. Verse six to seven. So, um, also we're from yeah. So, Philippians chapter two, verse six to seven. He <clears> says, "Who <throat> being in the form of God, though it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him a form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men." Amen. So, we just want to share what Gabe shared in our one Timothy, one Timothy, um, one Timothy three sixteen. I uh, just want to clarify that, that Jesus did come down into the form of man, just John 1. And also Hebrews 1 talks about um, um, how he used God the Almighty. You know what I mean? So uh, it's just, I just want to share that throughout the whole Bible, it says that Jesus is God. And, you know what I mean? I think the part that people have questions in, like what Pastor, Pastor Gabe said before, will be just the um, who he's been praying to or... Or questions like that, mm. but uh, games. What would you say, games? I have a question that people will usually share. Uh, in John 14, they usually say that the Father is greater than I. Mm. You know that, that, uh, that um, verse. They go, "Oh, Jesus is not God," because it says here that the Father is greater than I. I mean, it's pretty crazy how they use that um, mm. that scripture, right? So let's let let's stick with what you were just sharing in Philippians chapter two so that people can get, get a better understanding. Okay, good. So in Philippians chapter two, and then I'm just gonna read this so that you know people can hear it for themselves. Who being in the form of God thought it not mm. robbery to be equal with God, but mm. made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. So Remember, he, he was in, he was equal, he is God, but then he took upon himself the form of a servant, if that's maybe as clear as they, and was made mm. in the likeness of men. So mm. when Jesus was speaking things, these things, the Father is greater than I, um, how, in what form is he speaking from? You know what I mean? And verse 8 says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So when people say, <clears throat> "Me and Tui, <clears throat> we had a um, <laughs> we, we 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 had a conversation with you know people from a different faith, and that question get it kept being uh, kept being asked. Oh, but the scripture says this, and we answered it in so many different ways. But it's so clear that when Jesus is speaking, the nature that he's in, being as man, like he was always here to uplift the Father. He was always here to uplift the name of, of God. And, he, you know, when he's saying the Father is greater than I, you look at the same thing happens with John 14 and John 16 when the Holy Spirit comes and he says, oh, the Holy Spirit's going to say everything of what he has already said, of what Jesus mm -hmm. has already said. So he's not reestablishing anything new. And so when, when when people constantly ask that question, oh, but the Father is greater than Jesus, that's that's what we've just displayed tonight this far of how Jesus is God. You gotta understand one thing, this Jesus as God coming down in the likeness of sinful flesh. 
humbling himself in the form of a servant. You know, and for what and for what purpose? Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, and he says this for, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, so remember, like richness is only in heaven. The Bible yeah. talks about it, right? Uh, for though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor that you through his poverty might be rich. And so when he he had one job, De Deuteronomy chapter 18 tells us that um, um, when God is speaking, he says, I will put my words into his mouth. And that's when Jesus steps on the scene and says that he does nothing of himself. Everything that he's speaking is of what the Father has spoken to him. And so that's that will um, help to answer your question there. Amen. I just, I just want to add on as well, you know, when people use um, John 14, 28, um, they have to read the, the verse first. It says, you heard that I have told you I am going away and I will come to you. Uh, if you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I am. Mm -hmm. and, and people will say, see, um, Jesus is not God because the Father is greater than I am. Um, then uh, Jesus, sorry, the Father is greater than Jesus. So if they look at the scriptures, uh, that verse, the context, greater in what sense? Because Jesus in the top says, me, me and my Father, the Father's in me and I'm in the Father. You see me, you see the Father. Yeah. He already said that we're one. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what, well, greater in power? What, well, greater in person? Greater in deity? Greater in what? So if you look at the context, it's talking about position, greater in position, because it says, uh, in, in that same verse, it says, you will rejoice that I am going to the Father. That is the key word. I am going to the Father. There's a reason why you should rejoice. And that's in John 16, 7. So if you look at John chapter 16, verse 7, and it says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Mm. Or if, if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So the key verse here. Is they say greater what in position because he needs to go to the father for, for the spirit to be sent to us, and that's why he said in John 14 that you will rejoice if you understood, you would rejoice that I am going to the father for the father is greater. I am, and yeah. that's the context of the whole chapter there because you can't say deity, you can't say anything else. But we look at the context, it's talking about position. Mm. That's right. Yeah, so just to give people understanding, I mean, like, that's what a lot of people use to say this is not God, even though we just quoted, like, honestly, probably 40 scriptures, you know what I mean, that Jesus is God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I shared from Genesis all the way to the gospel that Jesus is God. You know what I mean? He is the promise. He's the one that, um, that sits on the throne. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. He said he's the Lord, our righteous. You know, he said he's a savior. The land that died for the world, you know what I mean? Throughout the whole Bible, even the first and the last, it says, I am the first and the last. And it says, I'm here that live but that die. You know what I mean? Um, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. I mean, that's all titles of God. And this is why us Christians believe that Jesus is the most high God. Mm. Just to give people understanding. Do we believe Jesus is God? Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I think... For, even to add to that furthermore you know there is no one that should be receiving worship besides mm. god in mm. matthew chapter 28 this is after his resurrection all right so he he hasn't ascended yet into heaven but this is after his resurrection and um matthew chapter 28 uh starting from verse 7 it says and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold he goes before you into galilee there shall you see him lo i have told you and they quickly departed, or, and they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. Now listen to this. Mm -hmm. And as they went to tell his disciples, disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, this is Jesus speaking, all hail. And they came and, be, and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Wow. You know what I mean? Like that, that, That's so clear as day that during his time, in his ministry, he, he, you know, they try to worship him, they try to crown him, and he, he, he fleed from that. So it, it would seem like, okay, maybe he's not God. But then, if you look at the context of everything that we've just been reading today, showing you throughout Scripture, this is now him being glorified. This is now him coming, being, being resurrected. And the first thing that he says to them is, "All hail." 
and then he receives worship. They, they're at his feet worshiping him. So that's, you know what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't get any clearer than that. Amen. Um, I just want to share, uh, maybe I'll use one more scripture. Um, mm -hmm. The one that we, a lot of Christians will use um, in John chapter 8, um, verse, verse 55 to 59. So John chapter 8, verse 55 to 59. And it says, Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I shall say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Well, that's crazy, eh? Mm. And, and you know what they say? Jesus just claimed to say he saw Abraham. <laughs> you know, yeah. Abraham was to see his day. And this is how they replied. Then said the Jews unto him, You are not 50, 50 years old. How have you seen Abraham? <laughs> how can you see Abraham, bro? You're not been 50 years old. <laughs> Man, this is the, the key word, bro. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am, was, Abraham was, I am. And we know who I am is in the Old Testament. Yeah. That I am that I am. That is, mm. that's God, man. And verse 59, and he says, Then I took up stones to cast, to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them. And they passed, and he passed by. Praise ye. Jesus just shared with them that Abraham saw his day. You know what I mean? And you know, and everyone knows that Abraham had a relationship with um, Abraham had a relationship with God. Mm. And, and, and Jesus says, you know what I mean? How can you see him? And he says, before Abraham was God. Mm. He just came himself to say, I am the I am. So it's pretty cool, man, just to share. Um, it's so clear in scriptures for the gospels mm. that Jesus is the almighty God. I've actually heard this interpreted in um, many different ways of people who don't actually agree with um, Jesus being God. And what he was just saying was that, like, he knew about Abraham, but he's not <laughs> saying that I'm God. You know what I mean? Like, and it's twisted. Yeah. And But yeah. to be honest, like, the scriptures are very clear when it says, before Abraham was. Remember, the, the context of, of what Toby was just sharing is about yeah. them wanting to stone him because... He's saying that he knew Abraham. Yeah. And now he's saying, before Abraham was, I am. <clears throat> you can't make that kind of claim unless you were there from the beginning. You can't make a claim before Abraham was, I am, unless you were there from the beginning. You know what I mean? So it doesn't make sense to to to, to make a claim and say, before Abraham was, I am, and just to, and the interpretation was, oh, he's just saying that that he knew about Abraham. Like, no, that's wrong. Scripture doesn't say that, you know what I mean? So, no, okay. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. It's so clear eh, that said, ha, verse 57, they yeah. understood what Jesus said. Yeah. They said, then said the Jews unto him, thou are not 50. How have you seen Abraham? They understood yeah. what Jesus That's was right. saying. <laughs> How did Abraham see you if you're not even 50 years old? Yeah. They clearly understood that Jesus said, I, Abraham saw me. That's right. He saw me. Yeah. You know what I mean? He saw my day. And that's so clear to show to show that he is God Almighty. Yeah, man. So, so crazy, man. So, to me, what about yeah. um some of the testimonies that we've um maybe we can share a few testimonies yeah. just because like you know I think we've given a very thorough yeah. scriptural basis and there's more. So for those of you who <clears throat> have heard the study so far, we've actually got so much more. But obviously, we want to try and fill in as much as we can. But Showing that Jesus is God from the old and the new, there's so many scriptures that that affirm His deity. Um, but we've had we've had many run-ins, eh? Muslims, mm. Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, unbelievers, and a lot of people, you know, say that obviously Jesus isn't God; He was just the man that walked on earth. Um, I remember one in front of our house. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. We we had these two ladies approach us. Um, and they, you know, they wanted to talk about who who Jesus is and who Jehovah is and and, and whatnot. So we got into conversation, and obviously it, it sparked debate because um, of what we had learned at that time as well. We like we knew that Jesus was God, and they didn't believe that. So we did start going back and forth about the deity of Christ, and and that's what I was sharing earlier. The only thing that they kept coming back with was. But 
the father is greater than him. And it almost seemed like that was the go-to card. Here's the difference yeah. between being led and being taught doctrine and, and being taught how to evangelize is that when you get stuck, you don't know where to go. When you're led by the Spirit of God, he gives you the answer. He will give you, in Luke 21, it says, I'll give you a mouth of wisdom that your adversaries cannot gain, say, nor resist. That's not to say that we're going out there trying to make enemies. These were guys who had approached us. And you've got to be willing and you've got to be ready to give an answer for the faith that's in you. You've got to be willing and ready to give an answer for <clears throat> every bit of heresy that comes your way. Because two of you, like, we've been through many, right? Yes, we have. It's very crazy. Um, yeah. uh, like even Mormons, um, Mormons believe in polytheism, like meaning uh, multiple, uh, multiple gods. Mm. They don't believe in God. They believe that you can become God. That God was once a man before he became God. Mm. So you have to be perfect to become God. Mm. You know what I mean? It's pretty crazy when you actually look into these doctrines. You know what I mean? And um, this is why it's so important to say to see if Jesus is the almighty God, because some religions don't say, no, no, Jesus is not almighty God. He's Satan's brother. You know, I mean, Mormons believe that, that Jesus is Satan's brother. Mm. General witnesses will say, Jesus is a God. He's Michael the archangel. Mm. You know what I mean? uh, Muslims will say, no, Jesus is just a good man. He's just a prophet. You know what I mean, it's, it's, mm. it's all over the Bible. And Jesus warns us, he goes, be careful if someone brings another doctrine, another gospel, even if an angel from heaven came to you preaching another gospel, he yeah, warns could. us. He even warns us in this. And what happened? You have new religions that said, an angel came to me mm. and gave me another doctrine. And I mean, it, it confirms the book. But even though the Bible, that's funny, the Bible says they're wrong, but they always go to the stage of like, you know, you got to pray about it. You know, you got to pray about it. But <laughs> you got to pray about it. Um, pray about what? Like, it's clear the Bible says not another gospel. Mm. Different gospel, like Apostle Paul was clear. Even Jesus says there'll be many antichrists, many false prophets will come out mm. and share false doctrines. And, and I believe this topic here is really important for people to understand because if Jesus is the almighty God, that means he, 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 um, he was in the beginning with God. Mm. In, in, in one, one, so that means he cannot be created. You know, he can't be created. The word was with God. We understand that Jesus, you know, he became flesh. We understood that he came into flesh. Yeah. But we're talking about he, um, when, 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 before he came down. Yeah. He was always, he said he had no beginning, no end. He's the first and the last. He's the Alpha and Omega. So if people say he's not the Almighty God, you know what I mean? And that's when they start making new doctrine. Or he was maybe this, this angel. Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 1 says, um, to which of any of the angels did I say sit on my right hand? Mm. To which of any of the angels? Like he says, there's none. That's there's right. no angel. You know, mm. so he tells us just to be careful of these doctrines that's coming out. You know what I mean? And, and for us to understand that Jesus is God, and I think we hit it like um, with a lot of scriptures tonight. In the testimonies, I've been through many debates. Um, uh, you know, I mean. I'm, Mom with Pastor Gaves at Brisbane. Uh, we had a good um, talk with uh, our brothers um, in JCC um, in Brisbane. Uh, we had a good three hour discussion. Um, then, after that, then Gaves had uh, his discussion in Melbourne um, with uh, one, of the, um, one of the big leaders. Mm. Uh, but usually, this topic is really up there because law and grace is really up there too. So just to encourage everyone, hopefully this this study will encourage you guys to understand that Jesus is not a God. He's not just a, a, an angel. He's actually the God. The Almighty God. Yes. And, and, and people try to put their own spin on who Jesus is as well. Just in, I mean, we came across, you know, the Hebrew Israelite movement as well. Uh, they, you know, they don't believe that Jesus is God. But they believe that the Jesus that came was black. It doesn't. It doesn't like you know. It was pretty obvious that he was a Jew. You know yeah. what I mean? That so obviously there's a lot of false claims that gets made and says that he was. Um, you know the the real Jews, actually, uh, the Hebrew Israelites and those Jews in Israel there or Ashkenazis and you know a whole bunch of false doctrine that's not biblical. But um, you know regardless of of, of the color of his skin. 
it, yeah. we're talking about his deity. You yeah. know what I mean? And so people are so focused on, like even, even those who don't really believe, they're so focused on trying to get an image of Christ and trying to see Christ through a painting or whatever yeah. means necessary that they could grab onto and say, well, this is who Jesus is to me. But remember, it's something that's spiritual. It's something that's within. You know, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, not believe because you saw a photo or you believe because he's black. Just, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like people are trying to paint Jesus in their own way so that it makes it more believable. But the word's <laughs> enough. Honestly, like the word is enough. You know, yeah. the, the word that shows us who he is from the old. And I think we've displayed that very clearly tonight from the old and the new, from the line that it came from, from the attributes that, that he holds to from the Old Testament and showing that in the New Testament, like it all correlates and it all, and, and he just, he marries together. So to, for anyone that still doesn't believe that Jesus is God on a biblical basis, then um, man, ask your questions, you know, put your comments down in, in the comment section and, and we can start answering that as well. Because um, if there is any arguments against it, we're more than happy to answer it. You know what I mean? Amen. So just to, to share what Gabe said, you know, I mean, it's 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 so sad that people think that they're saved because they, because of they are Jew. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he only came for the Jew, or they're saved by the skin color. You know what I mean? And in 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 Romans chapter two, verse twenty eight, verse twenty eight to twenty nine, and it says, uh, "For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Mm. Neither is that the circumcision which is outwardly in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is the one inwardly." Mm. The circumcision that is of the heart and in the spirit and in the letter, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. You know what I mean? So, Apostle Paul shall say, We're not a Jew by skin color, but how we look, but you're actually a Jew through your faith, about mm. from the inside to the outside. That's right. yeah. So, I guess it's um questions time. So, if anyone has any, has any questions, um, uh, if you only jumped in halfway, um, I suggest maybe you watch the video from the start. Mm. Um, so watch the video from the start because the answer is probably there. But um, if you watch the whole study and and you still don't understand, please um, send your questions, please. Yeah, send your questions through as well. Um, we do want to eventually go through some of the questions from last week and even previous studies. So when we do, every time we do these lives as well, when we get questions from previous weeks as well, We'll try and get to those uh, questions. Maybe on a separate video or on a separate live, um, we can go through some of the main arguments that people would bring up and we can cover that if we haven't covered that in any of the videos. But again, with a lot of the questions that we see, it's already covered. Um, just watch the you know, just watch the video from the beginning and you can um you can see that for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, praise the Lord. Same. If anyone has any questions, um, that's our study. I believe that we covered it, but we'll try our best to uh, answer questions. Mm. Yeah, it'll be good. Question below, please, 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 please enter the point. <laughs> Q&A time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But yeah, no, it's good. Eh? Like, I think it's, it's so cool when you read the Bible and you see, again, like what we've shared tonight were the main key scriptures. But when we looked into these things, like read the story or read the read the chapter for yourself, mm. like take the time to actually read your Bible and read for yourself, because you know we've only we wanted to get through these scriptures as quickly as possible. Um, uh, but yeah, this you know to read it in context and so that you can know for yourselves. Like instead of us just telling you, you can know it for yourselves when you when you read it and be like, okay, well, I understand now because. The word says so. It's not something that we bought. You know, it's it's straight from the word of God. It's not our, our opinions. It's it's what the Bible says. So, um, mm. uh, Nadia, can you see Lucas's um uh, question? Or is that only on my chat? Okay, so Lucas asks a question, but I think that's concerning Trinity. So he says, "Who did he pray to at the Garden of Gethsemane? His father, I believe." which is our Father as well, which is our God? Or was he praying to himself? So it's like Jesus praying to Jesus. Are you on your one too? Yeah, that's on my one because I'm a watch party. So Lucas, I'm not sure if Lucas can write on the um, on this chat, but he wrote on... Um, 
Yeah, so he, Lucas is talking about like, uh, what about Jesus says, pray to your Father, Heavenly Father, which is our God, as Jesus was referring to. So in Matthew 6.25. So um, is this like a Trinity question, Gabes? Um, it's like the week. I'm just going on your page now so I can view it for myself. Yeah. Um, who did he pray to at the garden? Is it the one? Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's, a lot of this is, is in concerns to Trinity. So Jesus was praying to the Father. That, I mean, in short, if we yeah. can. Obviously, that's going to lead to more questions about are there two the different Trinity. gods? Obviously, yeah. there isn't two yeah. different gods. But the Trinity study, um, we, we do have a very thorough study of that as well, which we will be sharing with you guys. Yeah. Um, That'll be coming up soon. Yeah. But if you don't understand the concept of Trinity, uh, maybe you can have a look into it. Yeah. Uh, but, but just to answer in short, and you, if you don't understand Trinity, it might be a bit confusing. But Jesus was yeah. praying to the Father. Like Father yeah. is God, Jesus is God, Holy yeah. Spirit is God. And that's all yeah. very we scriptural. We don't believe that Jesus is praying to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, because that's a bit um, weird. <laughs> 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 That'd be very weird. So that's why we believe in a triune God. So um yeah, so we believe um the triune God, but I guess that's um we'll get back to you, Lucas, in the next study. I think you know our our study. But um um uh, I've noticed that you've been looking into the Muslim Muslim um religion. Um but it's all good, bro. Like um I guess you're still searching, but would be awesome um when we do that study on Trinity, hopefully we can give you clarity. Mm. Praise the Lord. Is that? Oh, that's. I think it's a different Lucas. God bless you, Lucas. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God yeah. bless you, bro. So, um, any it. other questions? Yeah. I think there's something on I can't. What does it say? Um, it asks, can you be a Unitarian in oneness and be saved? Oh, so salvational questions now, eh? <laughs> well, okay, what's the question? Um, so the question is, can you be a Unitarian, meaning... Um, in turn, not believing in the Trinity and mm. oneness and be saved. I think that's pretty much we thought we were going to talk about heresy, right, Games? Yep. Yeah. So, so, so believing in that does fall under heresy, like what we believe. Can you believe in oneness and still be saved? No, because um, Galatians five talks about um, heresy as well. And believe it or not, we've we just finished not too long ago. Discussing this very topic about oneness and Trinity, um, which we we, we kind of knew that a lot of the questions would probably revolve around Trinity during this study. Um, but it's saying that um, to believe oneness, so so with his example that he used, oneness believe that Jesus is the Father, the Father is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is Jesus, and that they're all one, but they're not separated in any way. But Trinitarians yeah. believe that there's a separation between the three. Um, but can they both be right and be saved? I don't believe so, no. Yeah, it's it's a challenging question because <clears throat> because the Bible says, you know, that the Father sent the Son. Mm. But if you believe in oneness, that means that he's lying. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he didn't send him. He, he became the Son and he came down. So how did he has that called sent? Mm. You know, it's, it's a bit weird. You know what I mean? Um, being sent is you know, the... You know I mean, so God loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son. I mean, to say that that there's only one person, that's really hard to believe. Mm. And Unitarian same thing. Unitarian saying that they don't believe that Jesus is God. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, and it says I, I shared throughout the whole um, study today that Jesus is the Lord of Righteous, the Mighty God, throughout there. And I think there's a verse that Jesus says, if you don't believe I, that I am he, you will die in your sins. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's in John 8. So um, 
So you have to be really careful that um, please study yourself to be approved because everything that me and Cage is sharing is all biblical. Now we're trying, we're trying our best to not go off our own opinions. Mm. We're just trying to um, use what the Bible says. But yeah, because I mean, there'll be many false doctrines and I believe uh, oneness and Unitarians are false doctrine. Mm. Yeah, so it, maybe even if you can um, ask the guys on, on your channel as well, Tui, if they can bring the questions over to the to the live chat as well. Um, so I've got another question. Um, Zeta. Okay. Um, Zeta said, who is the father that is that the Messiah is referring to while he was walking on earth? Will this be another Trinity answer? So sorry, who is the father that the Messiah is referring to? Yeah, Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty much another Trinity question. So this is Zeta. Zeta Rose. Who is the father that the Messiah is referring to while he was walking oh, sorry. on earth? Yeah. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> Father's God. Is that, I don't know if that's... Yeah, it says God our Father. Yeah. God our Father, Jesus points to to the Father. Uh, yeah. Jesus says, "I'm not here to do my will, but the Father's will." Mm. Uh, he said, "He submit all things unto the Father." Of course, Jesus' job was to come and you know what I mean to come into the flesh and to be the Lamb for the world to, to sacrifice His life for the world. In Isaiah fifty three, that's the that's the prophecy of His coming. That's His whole purpose was to come and die for the world. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And also, it shows as well. Um, Jesus was the only one come preaching the kingdom. That nobody yeah. else knew about. Repent yeah. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you know, even right at the end of his ministry, when you know he's being ready to uh be crucified, he tells Pilate like his kingdom is not of this world. You know what I mean? So like he wasn't a part of what was here and what he testified of and what he knew about and what he was bearing record was was things that he was and had before he came into earth. So um yeah, who is the Father that the Messiah is referring to? It's uh, it, it's God, the Father. And this is Jesus speaking on our behalf. When In Luke, when it says, the kingdom is within you, that's talking about Jesus coming to set up the kingdom within you. Obviously, it's a spiritual one that, that he refers to. But um, that's only because we can now receive it and understand it through through the finished works of the cross. Amen. But, yeah. but guess what? we can... We'll definitely, um, um, we'll definitely have a Trinity study or Godhead study on um, for this for this topic because because me and Tui had already um, spoken about this. But one thing that we wanted to clear up first was: Is Jesus God? Yeah. And and I know obviously through the the topic of Trinity, we'll be able to share on the Holy Spirit side of God as well, and that'll clear Amen. up a lot more questions. Uh, um, yeah. I think another question. Yep. A question by Andy. Um, I'll get put that up, um, please, Nadia. I think Zeta, I shared that already. Like, we didn't say that Jesus spoke to Jesus. That's why we said we we're going to the Trinity. So, you, you guys are better clarity. But, can we get to the next one? So, Andy has a good question. Okay, so it says in um, to regarding the scriptures, what is your guys' views on it? James one thirteen and Matthew four one. Um, what does it say? Let me just let no man say, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Then you go to Matthew when Jesus is tempted by the devil. Matthew four one. Then was Jesus led by of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil? If Jesus is God, why did he get tempted? Where, where he says in James, God cannot be tempted. Let me know your thoughts, boys. 
So we'll go to the first scripture. So James 1. Okay. Yep, so James 1. Yes. Okay, cool. So, so yeah. This, yeah, this is a good question. It says, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Remember, every man is tempted. Mm. God does not get tempted. When Jesus came, we, we share this in Philippians 2 as well, when Jesus came down in the form of a servant, he humbled himself, he emptied himself of his deity. As well. In Hebrews, it talks about him being tempted in all areas. So Jesus was tempted as a man. You know what I mean? But he never fell to sin. That was the difference between him and every other man was that he was tempted just like everybody else, but he never fell into that temptation. So then the question is, does that mean God was tempted? No, because in James chapter 1, it says, but every man is tempted. <clears throat> Jesus, the word became flesh. He became a man. Therefore, he, he actually aligns with the scriptures even better, showing that he was a man. He became a man and he was tempted just like everybody else. Mm. Uh, I want to share as well uh, the context of that um, that verse is talking about a man that is um, being um, that's going through temptations, right? So, blessed is a man that in just verse twelve, blessed is a man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, when the Lord has promised to them that love him. Then he says, "Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God." So, this context of this verse is for people using God's name and say, "Oh no, God's tempting me to sin." God does not tempt you to sin. Look at verse 14. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away from his own lust and is enticed. Yeah. So the context of the verse is said that God's not talking about God not being tempted by um, evil. It's him. Um, it's when people use him as an excuse, I'm being tempted by God. Does it make sense? And the devil tempts for us to fail. God tests us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, if, we say, if we say that God does not get tempted, um, we use the scripture today in... Um, in I think um in in uh what was it in one Corinthians chapter ten it says they tempted Christ in the wilderness. Mm. You know what I mean? It said they tempted God in the wilderness. Of course they challenged God, you know what I mean? Mm. But you just have to be careful how we how we use the scriptures in Matthew chapter four, when Jesus is in the wilderness, what did he what did Satan tempt Jesus with? Like what what, what was before he said that in Matthew four? So let's go in Matthew four. Mm. Um, things of the flesh. What verse was that? Matthew four. Um, so, so starting from verse five. Yeah. Oh, actually, sorry. Before that, verse three. Are you talking about the temptations? Yeah. And I mean, um, like what just like what Pastor Gabe said. You know, I mean, the enemy is trying to challenge you. To to um to fall into the the love of the uh, the lust of the flesh, you know, and this is something that we have to be careful of. When Jesus says, um, it's not written that you should not tempt the Lord your God, and then He took Him up to the high mountains and tempted Him in the world. I mean, Jesus does not tempt you, put you in, in, in um doesn't put you in in sin. Does it make sense? Like mm. in, in um James one is not talking about um, you just going through a trial. There's a difference between you using God as an excuse. Because oh no, God is tempting me. He's putting me in a nightclub. You know what I mean? He's putting me in a nightclub to fail. You know what I mean? That's what James one is talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he said you're meant to endure temptations in James chapter one. You're meant to endure, and you get the crown of life. All right. The next verse it says God doesn't tempt you. Does not tempt you in the in the way that you that you put yourself in some in sin, and it says that you're not drawn. And it says that you are drawn away by your own desires. Yeah. So hopefully that makes sense, like to to really put those verses in context. Yeah, man. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hopefully, me and Gabe's answered that question because Gabe's answered the other side, and I answered the other side. So just to mm. come from different, different angles, because Jesus had to be tempted because he's in, he's in the flesh, he became human. Um, okay. Um, next one, can you see the next question, Gates? Um, next question, uh, from Canaan. Do you believe Melchizedek to be an Old Testament Christophany? Yeah. I think that's what it says. As in Christ from the Old Testament, Melchizedek. Yeah. So I think the 
references in Genesis. Let me just find it real quick. He's talking about Hebrews 7 as well. Hebrews 7 talks about Melchizedek, one of the yeah. priests. I think yeah. yeah, the depths of um, whom Melchizedek is in um, uh, Hebrews chapter seven, yeah. but um, he, in the Old Testament it talks about who Abraham paid tithes to, but yeah. he was the he was the patriarch at the time. He was the one that was <clears throat> sorry that they had paid tithes to and everything. So seeing that Abraham paid tithes to him, and, and who was he? He was the king of Salem. You know what I mean? Which was prophetic of what was to come king of salem salem being short for jerusalem you know what i mean um so you look at hebrews chapter 7 and it gives you a bit of a character back background of who he is should we just go to it real quick yep uh what's the key verse there hmm. Okay, so for he was yet. Um, I'm trying to find where it shows who he, who he is. Find whatever. It is. Do you have it there, Tui? Um, which 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 part of the in Hebrew seven? Yeah. So much of Jesus is. So anyways, he talks about who uh, Melchizedek is, and I'll and I read a bit of it. And he's, verse 15 says, And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who is made mm -hmm. not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Um, for he testifies, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. Mm. Inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest. Um, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Uh, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yeah. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And then mm -hmm. he talks about um, who Jesus is. And, and they truly were ma were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. So um, you see, I, I can't find exactly where it is um, having having no no father or no beginning. Oh, yeah. Did, did you know um, what you're trying to... Um... Yes, I know what you're talking about. Um... Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to find which one it is exactly. Okay, so verse 3 says, yeah. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. So is Jesus the Melchizedek of the, <clears throat> of the Old Testament? I believe so, yeah. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy, eh? Because it um, says the order of Melchizedek, and he was the, like the high priest you know, at that time. Oh. But it's funny, the no priest, that time, you know, like um, you know, before uh, until the law was put in, you know, I mean, that the priest would come through Aaron, and seeing seeing in Abraham's time that he paid a time, but it's funny, Melchizedek just shows out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> he just shows up out of nowhere. You know, I mean, like he just came back from you know saving his brother or nephew, and then um, you know, he just comes out of nowhere and he gives a tenth of his part, and and I agree with you, Canon. Maybe. He is a sign of um, Christ in the Old Testament through the mediator. Mediator to God is the same, probably the same in the New Testament. He says a change of a priest. Mm. I mean, that's why was paid through now. It's through Jesus Christ, like a better of a, a better covenant. And so, it's, it's, so yeah, 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 you just see within the Old Testament, because there's only two references of um, Melchizedek in the Old Testament. I know there's one yeah. in Genesis, one in Psalms, and they're both yeah. the exact same thing. But it's very there's not much information. And then all yeah. of a sudden, you come into Hebrews chapter seven. He's he's a yeah. someone that comes out of nowhere, no father, no mother, no um, no descent. You know what I mean? It's no beginning yeah. or end. And no other human on earth has that uh, has that type of background. Mm. You know what yeah, I mean? After the, the priesthood, yep. 
Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Yeah, amen. Uh, um, I think Flo asked a question. Would you say that the Trinity is a false doctrine? False doctrine. We will, uh, where we stand, we stand with the Godhead right now. We stand with Trinity and we've got a very in-depth study coming about that. We wanted to, again, we wanted to uh, establish Jesus being God first because obviously there's there's a lot of questions that surround that topic. Um, but we will get to the study of Trinity. But where we stand with um, Trinity, it's 100% um, biblical. Yeah, biblical. And we'll show that through um, Scripture. Yeah. Because we believe the concept of the Trinity is in the Bible. Yep. yep. Obviously, we're going to hear the arguments like the word Trinity yeah. is not in the Bible. We know that, you know, um, oh, Godhead, Trinity. you know, Godhead. <laughs> we would say <laughs> Trinity because it's what people mainly know the topic as. Um, but the Godhead is written within the Bible. Father is God, Jesus is God, Holy Spirit is God. Um, and we'll bring that study up as well. Yeah. What was the um is there another question? Um I was just looking into my to my um page to see if there's any other questions. Anything on there? Um well, not yet. So um thank you guys for listening. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> any, any more questions. I know you just wanna get into the Trinity, you know what I mean? But that has come later. Yeah. We, we want to introduce this first before we get to, to the Godhead. Yeah, that's right. So, um, look, we'll, we'll, we, will, we will post it up on the page. We'll have a flyer on there, what our topic will be. And uh, when we do discuss the Trinity, we'll, we will break it down. And that's going to take, obviously, a lot more time than this because we're going to have to go through showing all three, Father is God, Jesus is God, Holy Spirit is God, but also showing at the same time that there's a separation between yeah. the three so that we can just prove biblically who Jesus was from the beginning, from the beginning to the end, uh, but also showing that, you know, the Holy Spirit was there just, just as much as uh, Jesus as well. But yeah. yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, um, awesome. Guys, if there's any more questions, Praise the Lord, man. Uh, it's been very fruitful doing this top, uh, this online um, studies. Uh, thank you guys for uh, listening and asking questions. Uh, that's something that me and uh, Pastor Gabe's desire for a long time to actually use our knowledge and what we learn to share with everyone. You know what I mean, mm. we want people to come to Jesus, and um, I think this is a good um, platform for it. Yeah, for to to uh, share the word of God. Yeah, amen. It's good. Praise the um, Lord. So, Mike, in there. Sorry, boys, I'm just jump on. Is there a topic, or can we ask anything? Um, it is a topic. Um, a topic was in Jesus God, and we went through the study here. And just in short, yes, Jesus is God. Hmm. Um. Yeah, so we did go through a lot of scripture yeah. with that. Um, but yeah, if you do have a question on whether Jesus is God or not, uh, I guess you can look at the study or you can ask for yourself, I guess. Amen. All right. Was there any other questions? I think there's still more coming. So, um, I saw why, what did that say? Why does Jesus say son of man? What do you mean by that? Why does Jesus say son, son of man? Well, Maybe if there's a scripture that you're referring to, that makes yeah. it a lot 
Let's yeah, subscribe. Just, man. You know what I mean? Son of God, son of man. There's many scriptures, I guess. Maybe a specific scripture that will help. Um, um, maybe I'll, I'll use one. So in Daniel chapter 7, um, verse 13 and 14. So this is, uh, we believe, uh, this is the prophecy when um, Jesus fulfills the, um, fulfills his, you know what I mean? He died on the cross. He goes back. So he says, I saw in the night. So Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, um, 13 to 14. And it says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given to him dominion and glory and the kingdom that all people, um, people, nations, and language should serve him. His dominion is everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So this is the prophecy I shared about um, Jesus. I mean, he, he's also called the Son of Man. Um, Let's go from there. So Daniel, so give a second, guys. So I want to cross-reference this, right? So Daniel chapter seven. Um, okay, let's go to um, Mark fourteen, verse sixty-two. All right. So Mark fourteen sixty-two. You want me to read it? Yeah, so um, it says, um, so we'll go from 61, 61 to um, 64. Um, 64. Says, yeah, yeah. yeah, but he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said <clears throat> unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, what need we any further witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. Amen. See that? So when he, when he's, it, the high priest knew that he was quoting Daniel chapter 7, the Son of Man come in the clouds. And Jesus quoted that. They see the Son of Man sit on the right hand of power come in the clouds from heaven. And he already knew that he was quoting about, he's trying to say he's God. Say, so oh, you're trying to say um, you're God. Let's hear the blasphemy, what he's saying. So just to um to show to show them that um the son of man is he knows he understands that he is the son of man referring in the old testament. Mm. Um, With, um there's one there from I don't know the name is Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah um Isaiah is a, a oneness. Um, Jesus was so Isaiah. Um, Allah, <laughs> Allah Jesus, what, what was it say? Are oh, they not different? Jesus was God in the flesh. Wait, Jesus was Father God in the flesh. There's okay, no scripture you, to back that up. What there's no, there's no scripture that says Father God? We'd, um, if you're gonna make statements, can you have a biblical reference to back it up? Um, if not, they just sorry. I've spoken to um, Isaiah many times, and I, you know, and I gave him scriptures, and he usually gives one, you know, Jesus God and Jesus God and one God, one God, and that's it. You know what I mean? Um, I think he's just maybe Isaiah just waits in the Trinity study, then the answers will be there. Oh, okay, so yeah, I think you'd be more interested in the Trinity study that we have. Yeah. I mean, maybe we can do that next week. We'll see how we go. Yeah, because it seems. <laughs> it seems to be the one that everyone wants to see. Yeah. I actually can't wait for that study either. Um, but yeah, like, look, if you're going to make statements like that, that's you know, that's cool. You can anyone can have their own opinion, but put a biblical background to it, put a biblical yeah. basis to it, so that we can go off the scripture that you have to present to us. If Jesus claims to wait, man, I can't. Even see that. Hold on one second. If Jesus he claims he has a God, how can he be God? I don't. Do you get that or? I think they're trying to say how Jesus says, um, "My God and your God." Is that what you're referring to, Mike? 
uh, because he uses Matthew 27, 46. Remember that? That's, I think that's in a uh, uh, cross-reference from, from Psalms. So uh, Matthew 27, 46. At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lamas, lamas, sabakatanai. That is to say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Yeah. So in um, so that's the cross-reference that it says in Psalms, Psalms 22. Um, it says, to a chief musician, um, unto a uh, asha, is Psalms of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you so far from helping me? And from the words of the roaring, oh my God, I cry into the day, um, daytime, but you hear us not, and in the night season, and and not in sun. Uh, this is like a prophecy. He talks about how he, she how he, uh, yeah. he, he, he feeling a prophecy that he was gonna die because David, man, a lot of the things he said was all prophecy. I mean, and um, um even in this verse, um, verse sixteen and seventeen, the same chapter, it says, "For darkness have compassed me." The assemblies of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. In verse 17, I may tell all my bones. Um, they look and stare upon me. So it's talking about him being pierced, you know, like being like he's saying on the cross. You know, because they cross, but they understand that this is the cross reference to show that Jesus has fulfilled what um, what King David has, has, was sharing in the Old Testament. Gabe's? Yeah, no, I agree. I was just trying to read through some of these other questions as well. Yeah, just to yeah. give that uh, his cross reference. And I mean, Jesus says, "Yeah, my God, your God." It doesn't contradict anything. Mm. Yeah, it does not contradict. He says, "My God," but throughout the whole scripture, this is why you need to know. Like, we're going to talk about the Trinity to yeah. answer the questions. Yeah, he was led by the Spirit of God as well. He was yeah. led into the wilderness by the Spirit. He constantly regards, uh, um, referred to God as. His God or His Father, and something that He did throughout the whole New Testament it doesn't say that He isn't God. Because remember, Philippians two is always going to be key to this. He humbled Himself. Mm. He took upon the form of a servant, one that is serving. He, I did not come to be served, but to serve. He came to set the example that we were going to be led by the Holy Spirit, just the same way that He was um, tempted in every area. So we got to we got to understand that. The reason why people find a bit of a, you know, find it hard to understand is only because he's praying to God and he's he's doing these things that would seem like only humans would do, which he was. He was fully man when he was here on earth. You know, he tempted and everything in every area, but he came to be an example to us so that the way that he walked would be the same. That's exactly what the word Christian means, to be a follower of Christ. And you can't follow something if there is an example first set in stone for us to be able to go after. But yeah. Amen. Praise Lord. Um, I think next question, I think Flo says, yeah, that's what I've learned from Pastor Gino Jennings. So we, me and Pastor Gabe's understand that he's a oneness teacher. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Rogers as well. Uh, oneness, um, yeah. So the Flo asks a question, uh, do you believe they are false prophets? Do you believe that because they teach oneness and teach um, um, oneness, do you, we believe that he's false prophets? Uh, look, the way that we see it is um, if people don't yet have an understanding on something, maybe they're still yet to learn. But because uh, we've seen people convert from there. I think it is a bit different as well because they are in leadership. They are mm -hmm. in a place of, um, they're in a position of leadership as well, teaching mm -hmm things that are heresy and obviously they're going to think likewise but at the end of the day the word is true the word has to show what 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 you establish and what you believe is true oneness like what we said before it's heresy mm. and if you continue to teach it then you're in heresy that's what it says in uh, galatians chapter five yeah it's, it's pretty um challenging you know what i mean because um you know what i mean they just have to understand that what um, Jesus, you know, this, you see a, dis a distinction between Jesus and the Father uh, throughout the um, throughout the Bible. 
So um, to say that Jesus is the Father and the Father is Jesus is just pretty confusing. So I think that's why we're going through the Trinity. Yeah. Um, so Isaiah asked the question again. Um, I think I answered this um, many times to you, Isaiah. <laughs> What's the question? Um, Jesus said unto him, I have been so long with you, and yet um, has you not known me, Philip? He that sees me has seen the Father, and has said about them just the Father. Okay, can you read the next verse, please? <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, people like to um, cherry, scripts, um, cherry pick scriptures. When you keep reading down, um, uh, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's, it's cool just to hold one scripture, isolate one scripture, but you have to look at the context of the scriptures for you to understand what he's talking about, okay? Um, then after that, in verse 10, he says, Believe you not that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. Then he separates himself. The word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for my very good sake. Um, throughout this whole chapter, the whole chapter, there's so much distinction of them. You know what I mean? Um, it's, okay, I'll give you a verse. Um, what was it? Okay, verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And... Verse 16, and if I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So there's so much separation, and then you get to verse um, verse 23, and it says, Jesus said unto him, If any man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our bed with him, and we will come to him. I mean, like, um, as I like, you know, it's easy just to cherry pick scriptures, but when you look at this, the whole chapter, the separation. Jesus says, He, the Father, will send a comforter, and He, you know, what I mean, you can't just use one verse in nine and say, You see the Father, because Jesus did not say, You see me, um, wait, show us the Father, um, sees me, have seen the Father. He didn't say, Look at me, I am the Father. He never said that. He never said, you see me, I am the Father. He did not say, he, he didn't say it like that. He said, you see me, you see the Father. And verse 12 is the key verse. He's talking about the works. Father in him, moving in the power of God. Mm. I think we'll just focus more on the questions about whether Jesus is God, because I know that. Yeah. Um, look, stay tuned yeah. for the Trinity study, the Godhead study that, that we will be presenting. And we'll answer a lot more questions then because we don't want to neglect the ones that are asking about whether Jesus is God or not. I think yeah, Andy look, kept asking, he kept posting something. Um, I don't know if it was a question. Let me go back to it. About 1 Corinthians 8, verse 4 to 6. Hmm. Wait, is that a question? No, I don't think that was a question. It was just the scripture. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Natalie Tamala. What did it say? Um, Natalie. Um, yes. Hey, guys, is it okay to listen to sermons if they don't believe Jesus God? It's me, Lanu. <laughs> Upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, is it okay to listen to sermons if they don't believe believe Jesus is God? Yeah, Nolo said that you can watch Jolo's thing, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't get the question. Is it okay to listen to sermons if they don't believe Jesus is God? Yes, yeah, so that means you'll be watching um Joe Witness's sermons. Yeah, so they don't believe Jesus is God. So you can watch someone that doesn't believe that Jesus is God. So pretty much listen to Jehovah's Witnesses, Unitarians. Mm. So it's no, it's not okay. <laughs> because they're preaching another gospel. Another Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, it's another Jesus, another spirit 
another gospel. Mm. And I guess, look, people are always going to try and find teachers that they want to heap to themselves, which is what the scriptures talk about. You know, I mean, things that will suit them. So I know a lot of people would stick to, um, let's just say, if it's Calvinist, for example, steer away from this for a second. They would hold to all the teachers, the biblical teachers and all the sermons that Calvinists would um, share only because it would seem more biased on, on, on that. I mean, you would agree more on their doctrine, you know what I mean? Whereas to have an open and fair view of, you know, what what the Bible has to talk about, you can't be biased in your search, in your understanding. Like if you don't agree with Trinity, then if you only listen to, example, Gina Jennings or Marcus Rogers, obviously it's going to just confirm what you believe. But if you don't explore the other side, then you're never going to really know. All you're going to do is just target and come against, you know, what you possibly would not know as being truth. If that makes sense. Amen. Um, we've got another question. Um, not sure if you answered it during the study, but a great topic to cover is, has Jesus always been God? A study of modalism. Um, modalism is like God moving in persons. Like one person moving in yeah, moving in moods. Um, we don't believe that. Um, but Jesus was he always God? I think that's why I shared in Hebrews one. He said to God, um, to to the Son, your throne, O God. And he uses that the um in in Psalm one hundred and two and talks about how through the foundation of the earth he made it. In John one, he talks about um that he was with God in the beginning. Through him, everything was created. Um, Hebrews one again, if you read up, it says, "And the Son of God." Um, um, through the old time was spoken through the prophets and the last days through the son he said he's the creator of all the worlds mm. um the, yes jesus was always god yeah yep. throughout creation and what we when we made the comparisons as well um maybe you can view the study a bit later we yeah. made a comparison of jesus being there throughout the whole old testament and the revealing is in the new testament we we read quite a few scriptures uh but yeah if you could maybe refer to the study again, you, you'll see um, we, we covered that question pretty thoroughly. But in refer in, in um in regards to murder murderism wise, we don't agree yeah. with that. Yeah, that's we, um, just to show that God's just changing modes. Yeah. Yeah. We disagree we believe in uh, monotheism, meaning one of yeah. in um in the Godhead. Um, yes. Yeah. So monotheism means one God one being, you know, we don't believe God moving. Yeah. Uh, so, so, modalism still falls under the category of um, monotheism, but it's more so the way that they believe God is. So, you know, obviously, modalism believes that is one God, but He's changing at different times. Yeah. But obviously, Trinitarians, people who believe in the Godhead, believe that there are three distinct persons in one. But again, we'll get to that study. So I got a question from Veronica, but that's on my page. And Zayda that asks us, why do we laugh when people ask genuine questions? I always see spirit of mockery. But I, I think the reason why we laugh because we know the people. So uh, when when um, Isaiah spoke, we understood where he came from. We know him. And we laugh with um, Natalie because we know who that is. So um, we laugh because we actually have a relation with those people. So I think we just have to be careful that you're not assuming. Yeah. Human spirit of mockery because that's all assumptions. It's okay, so um, cool. Yeah, there's a lot. So good. Like, um, thank you guys for your guys for all your questions. You know, it's awesome to um to be here to answer your your questions because it's we do believe that Jesus is the Most High. Mm. Hopefully you guys got any more questions. Hello, Michelle. If not, if not man, all well, good. Yeah, praise the Lord. I, 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 guess I believe we get everything, yeah. Any other questions in regards to Trinity, we will we'll cover that. We will cover that yeah. topic. Um, yeah. Or oh, another question. Oh, it was a question. Oh, One was it? Yeah. Um, verse 6. 
But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. What's the question? So what's your thoughts, guys? Like, um, that's, that was it. Um, I think it, it shows within the text as well. It says, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things. I know some people would probably just stop there and say, ah, it's only the Father, mostly Muslims, or you know. But then it goes on to say the exact same thing about our Lord, Kurios, which is what Lord is, I'm referring to God, in the, even in the Old Testament. Um, by whom are all things and we by him. So then it says it about the Father, and then it says it about the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. So it's it's within the text itself. Amen. Yeah. God bless you, Apostle Alan. I know you're watching. Is he on? Praise the yes. Lord. Yes. He can be giving me scriptures for the whole night. Oh, <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that's our spiritual father, the one's been discipled, being Pastor Gates being discipled from. Yeah. Um, praise the Lord. Um, but yeah, I guess we can um, gather up some of the questions from, um, you know, from the guys who do ask questions later on. Uh, just look, if you do have more questions on this, uh, this will be posted on on my page, Short of Faith, and on Tui's page. So if you do have more questions relating to this topic, again, we will get to Trinity. And we do have a very thorough, in-depth study. That one's going to go a lot longer than this one because there's a lot to cover. Um, but just in regards to this topic, leave a comment um, in the comment section in regards to is Jesus God if you don't agree with it. Praise the Lord. But please at least watch the study first so that we're not answering the same questions that have already been asked or answering questions that we covered thoroughly in the study as well. Um, but always open for, for you guys to... You know, ask your questions. Um, but I guess we'll probably leave it at that if there's nothing else. I think, yeah, a person, um, Genesis, asked a question. Greetings, brother. This is off the topic. Um, but will there be a discussion on the right way to of a baptism? So I guess that'll be a baptism study. If, if you guys do have topics that you want us to cover, because this is going to be a weekly thing that we do as well mm -hmm. if you guys have specific topics that you, you you want us to cover um again leave it in the comment section either on, on my page short of faith or on Tui's page as well um to if so if 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 there are any questions put put the topic that you'd like us to discuss in the comment section below and and me and Tui will look into it put a study together and we'll, we'll answer it amen and someone said it's Andy we are all brainwashed amen we're washed our brain are washed, uh, washing all the dirt away from our brain. I mean, all the rubbish. Mm. So, praise the Lord. So, God bless you guys. Um, you know, just to encourage everyone out there, um, please do your homework. Um, if you do have um, questions, please ask me and Gabe. But I think me and Gabe's are done. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much us for the night. Yeah. Any other Praise questions Lord. again? Please leave it in the comment section below and we'll get to your questions. So, God bless you guys. Um, for the Sabbath study, um, um, me, Gabe, so we, we got your questions from the Sabbath study. We'll probably answer that um, next time. There's so much questions um, about the Sabbath. Um, but I think we answered all your questions only if you just watch the start of the study of the Sabbath. I've noticed that yeah. a lot of people had questions of the study we did last week on the Sabbath. Do we keep the Sabbath as Christians? And people's questions was actually answered through our study from the beginning. Yeah. So if you not watch from the beginning of the study, I encourage you guys to, to watch from the beginning to the end, and I believe every question of the Sabbath uh, will be answered. Yeah. Man, God bless you guys. I think yeah. we're done. Amen. Uh, so, um, Gabe's want to finish off with prayer? Yeah. Yeah, praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we just want to thank you, Lord, for bringing us together to be able to uh, bring a study out to those who are listening today. I just pray, Lord, that every heart is open, every ear is open to hear what the Spirit has to say. I pray, Lord, that they don't just go by any opinions that um, is shared by everybody else, Lord, but they continue just to show, uh, search by the Word of God only. I pray that that gives clarity, gives peace into their heart, and gives them understanding revelation 
of who you are. Thank you, Lord, that we had the opportunity and the platform to be able to share about you and that we continue to glorify you. Uh, we leave, we place all these things at your feet, Lord, that you continue to counsel us in your word um, and just lead the way for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you guys.